hello guys welcome back to my channel in today's tutorial we'll be drafting the shirt collar for the men's button down shirt in my last video we drafted the pattern for this shirt in case you haven't seen the video i'll leave the link in the description so if you'd like to see how i draft this shirt collar then keep watching To draft this collar, we'll be needing our front and back yoke shirt pattern. I'll go ahead and measure the back and front neck circumference and with these figures, we'll be drafting the collar. I'm starting first with the back neck circumference and here I have 5.1 one something. I'll just measure the whole neck circumference and divide by 2 to be on a safer side. So here I have 10.25 inches and half of that will be 5.125. So if you encounter numbers like these, just measure the whole circumference and divide by 2. I will do the same for the front shirt pattern and here I have 4.5 inches before the button extension plus the 1 inch button extension I have 5.5 inches. I will add up these numbers to get the total neck circumference. For the front, I have 5.5 multiplied by 2. This gives me 11 for the total front neck circumference plus 10.25 inches for the back. This totals to 21.25 inches. I'm working with a neck circumference of 19 inches. So when I subtract 19 from this number, I'll be left with 2.25 inches. 2 inches for the button extension on both sides and 0.25 inch for ease. From the center back line on my start line, I will place 5.125 inches half of the back neck circumference. I will square off that point and this point becomes my high shoulder point. And from that point, I will place temporarily 5.5 inches half of the front neck circumference. On the center back line, I will place 1.25 inches for the height of the band. I will place this same measurement on my high shoulder point and I will connect these two points with a straight line. On my center front line, I will go up by 1 inch and with my curve ruler, I will connect this point back into the start line. The reason for this is because our neckline is curved and not straight. Now I'll place half of my front neck circumference of 5.5 inches on this slightly curved line. That was why I said temporarily the first time and I'll square up that point. You can see the slight difference from the initial line when we place the measurement on a straight line. I will go in again with my tape and measure just to reconfirm I have my 5.5 and from what I have here is not exactly on 5.5 so I will make this correction before we continue. Whenever you draw this neck curve by going up by 1 inch or 3 quarter inch, always replace your front neck circumference on this slightly curved line to prevent unnecessary excess on the band when sewn. On that corner, I will align my ruler on the line to get that for the 5 degree angle and I'll square out that point. Rulers like these are good for these. If you do not have any of these rulers, not to worry. At the point where you mark the height of your band, just go in by 0.25 inch and draw in your 45 degree slanted line. On this line, I'll place 1 inch for the height of my band. You can also do 3 quarter inch. And with my curve ruler, I will connect this point back to my high shoulder point. From the 45 degree slanted line, I will go in by 3 quarter inch for my button extension. I will square up this point and draw in the shape of my front band. I know you will be like, but the button extension is 1 inch. Yes. When you measure the distance between the 45 degree slanted line to the center front line is 0.25 inch and when you add this up, you get 1 inch. If you take this line from the 3 quarter inch point all the way down to the start line and measure, you will see that your 1 inch button extension is intact. For the color itself, I will extend my center back line upwards. 
I will draw a horizontal line that is one inch or one and a half inches away from the band. On the center back line, I will place 1.75 inches for the color height. I will place the same measurement on the center front line and I will connect this point with the straight line. At the center front, I will extend my line by 1 inch. At this point, you can play around with the shape of the color. It all depends on what you're going for. I'm just doing a basic standard color. On that 1 inch point, I will go up by 0.25 inch. And below the color on the center front line, I will come down by half an inch and I will draw in the shape of my color. Like I earlier mentioned, this part totally depends on what you're trying to achieve. If you want it dramatic, you can go down higher, you know, be experimental here. Now that our color is ready, we will measure to see if everything is in synchrony. So we'll measure the part of the color that will be attached to the band, both sides. On the color, from the center front line to the center back line, we have 9.6 inches. And on the band from the center front line, not from the bottom extension to the center back line, we also have 9.6 inches. In case you measure these two places and yours doesn't match, your color is shorter than the measurement you got on your band. At the place where I came down by half an inch, depending on how many inches you came down by, go down again by 0.25 inch and redraw your curve. Then you remeasure the line it must match the total height of my color in front is 2.75 inches and at the back is 1.75 inches i'll go ahead and mark my notches so that it will help me when i'm assembling this color and through my lines So that's it for me guys if you find the video helpful do not forget to like the video share with your soulmates comment leave all your questions in the comment section and stay tuned for the sewing part a bientôt